Yeah, hello, how are you? Um, let me just uh, just give you a little bit of, you know, I'm not a magician here or not a person with the supernatural powers, but I'm here to give you a scientific basis and ideas and probably ways in which we may be able to tackle some of the important problems that are actually of chronic diseases that lie in this. And in fact, possibly cure them if we all get together and understand how and how we can do this actually. Let me just start with the, a, a personal anecdote just to give you how difficult this has journey has been and how, how why complicated it is actually. There's something that I haven't shared with people yet uh, ever in my life and this is the first time. But all of you would recollect actually and this, sorry it's many of your students but all of you would you know, just fantasize maybe because many of your students here of you know, the day when your loved ones would come and you know, say to you, will you marry me? And I recollect that date actually when, when this happened with me on a wonderful romantic evening, hands in hand, oblivious of the world, when we got this word across to my wife and, you know, and, we, we, not, and we acknowledge, will you marry me? And I said, yes, and she said, yes. And that was something fantastic. But then she immediately retorted back and said, but do you know that I have vitiligo and vitiligo some of you would recollect is in fact a disease that, that causes white pigmented particles and I was a PhD student then and my whole idea was how to solve problems of diseases and how to look at some of these diseases as a problem. It's interesting that despite all, the, all that I thought through that night twisting and turning in my bed asking constantly questions about what you want to do and what you don't want to do. But you really come to the conclusion that heck, what the hell if this has happened now, it could have happened the next day after the marriage. And that simplifies many times to look at. But even as a practitioner of a science, I did not have strength to think about that we can cure these diseases. And if you look at 25 years hence, which is now almost 25 years, if you ask a question, can we cure diseases like this? And many of you would give me an answer, not. And that's the problem, and that's the challenge that why we all need to look at. On the slide that is behind me, actually, I've actually put two columns of diseases that you can look at. One on your, one on your right, and one, one on your left. And you can see the one on your left, in fact, how many of you think you can solve the disease like one on your left, actually, if you can raise your hand, actually? Then if you think the diseases that are on your left are in fact solvable, and many of you would think, yeah, they, they are. In fact, the one disease on the right, in fact, stays with you all your life, but the one disease on the left, in fact, stays with you, and, and you can cure them in a shortened period of time. So what was the reason for this? And the reason really for this is the fact that many of these diseases, in the reason for this is the fact that the population differences in the two diseases can be easily segregated. You can see here that in fact there are two independent people on one who are a small curve which shows that these people don't have the disease and on the left one the one that you have the, that you are normal people you don't have the infections. So many of these infected disease people, in fact, you can rationalize and divide them into two populations. And what antibiotics does, which has revolutionized the world, is what it does is, in fact, treats people who have infected one and brings them to a normal, normal class of people, actually. And that makes this really interesting because it's easier to be able to do this than be able to carry out the process, actually. And it's because of this history of antibiotics that one is able to do this. Now, if you ask a question with regard to chronic diseases, unfortunately, the story is very different. Because the chronic disease is, in fact, a disease within your own body. It's about your own system, and it's about your own self, that what is happening to you, and how does it, rather than, in fact, an exterior person doing it. And in fact, since this is what most of the science that happened for last for the infectious diseases, all of our clinical research, unfortunately, even today demands that there should be two population of people if you want to develop clinical research where one, in fact, tries to cure and the other, which is a normal human being, actually. 
In fact, that's not the case if you look at the human by itself, physiology, can be described as a continuum of variety of states. It's not a single state of our body. What I showed you then, two different curves were across population. In fact, this is within the same person itself. And you can see this red disc that's moving around is moving around between the regions that are blue and the orange. The, re the region of the blue, in fact, corresponds to what you would like to call yourself as a healthy zone. This is a zone where you know you can, you can have all physiological parameters going on well. The region on the red, in fact, the region that actually is a partly disallowed, and I like to call it as a metastable region. Just to give an example of what is this metastable region of your body is, you can say that your BP is normal when you are in the, when you are in the blue zone, but if I start running, your BP, in fact, starts to increase. And many of your parameters of heart rate, in fact, they also do. So in fact, they all now move into a space that you would like to call a metastable region of the body. Now, as the moment you stop running, within no point of time, the red disc, in fact, comes back and stays within your, the blue zone. And so it's this blue zone then defines the steady state of your body and a healthy state of your body, in fact, to carry out. And similarly, the body is very, very beautiful in terms of adapting all these things. And that's why if you have a rich fatty food, you can in fact use a certain pathways that are away from this, or you can use, a, if you use a very high sugar diet, you will have in fact a, a, a different part of the zone that you would look at. But at all given point of time, you want to come back into the blue zone of your body, which is actually a stable state and a good health of your body. The longer you stay in the metastable stage, the longer the propensity that your body is in fact going to go and turn out into an areas where you're in fact going to cause diseases to yourself and create some of the problems that are going to be, that are, that are going to be talking about it. And that is why the chronic word in fact means sustained period of effects that lies in the region of metastable regions which then, due to an altered, altered pathways or an altered infection, spiral down into a form that is called diseases. Now, what is the use of these then, these states of our body? How can we make use of them? And in fact, how can in fact make better life out of it? Now, there are two important parameters that one needs to understand in a common man's language, actually. One is what you would like to define the elasticity of your body, actually, of your functions of your body. You want to know how long and how long can I stay in a metastable state, yet come back to the normal state. Because if you stay longer and longer in metastable state, you want to come back to the state. And in fact, many of these are determined by our genetics of our body. What we have, what are we made up of, what we have got. That way you can see that some people are very happy eating fatty food and they in fact don't get any problems. There's some people in fact have problems taking the fatty food and in fact are not able to actually sustain their life very well on the same effects. That's a genetic part of your system. But in fact, the genes while they determine these transitions, the how these transitions you can move around in a way that makes your body far more healthier and interesting is in fact you can define. It's not defined only by the genes that are present in them. And therefore, it's the elastic limit, what I call, of your sustenance power determines whether your body will withstand pressures or stresses or a variety of problems that can then finally boil down to the disease problem. So how do we look at this? And, the, and very simplistically, the human body, in fact, can be represented by, by a diagram that, in fact, is very, very critical to maintenance our system. The first one that I already talked to you about is the elasticity limit. It's the limit by which every function in your body can be stretched, but in fact brought back to the normalcy. You can have a very heightened BP level, you can have a heightened heart rate, you can in fact eat only sugars for very long periods of time and then come back to the normal part of the life you can look at. The second and the most important part in fact, which is becoming very, very significant is the energy management of your cells, of every aspect of the work that you, in fact, carry out. How are you going to utilize this energy that is going in and the energy that is going out 
in fact, to carry the function of everything that you do, starting from respiration, which requires your energy, or for, a, or for your, bre or of your heart muscles to work, or your body muscles to work. And therefore, it's the balance of all these that determines is this. And humans, in fact, have evolved by actually cross-talking between two important components of how much elasticity you need. If you eat raw food, how will you survive? If you eat this other kind of food, how will you look at it? And the problem then, interestingly, during evolution, another important thing occurred, that is, how do we protect ourselves? And the way you protect our, yourself is, in fact, by do, using immune responses that are, again, inherent to your body. So how am I going to protect if I have certain foreign thing coming in, or in fact, in a way that I'm going to be actually having a, an, an issue in some part of the body? Now, these three together, forms a very, very integral part of our body system and therefore are really the basis of what kind of diseases and how these diseases, in fact, will perpetuate and carry out the process. The inflammation that I wrote to get it, at down is, in fact, an outcome of a combination of all these things. Inci incidentally, the inflammation is an important aspect of resolution of any disease that you have in the context of chronic diseases, or even for infectious diseases. But it's the balance of this inf inflammation is what one needs to calibrate and one needs to understand. And in fact, what many of the, many of the other technologies or techniques that we use to improve our body system, which has either got to do with, say, yoga, or got to do with you know, a variety of other purposes, is in fact is improving the elastic limit or your ability to, in fact, get immune system to work better and better. So all of these, in fact, functions to get and improve your parameters that makes all of them very, very important and interesting. So how do we then proceed further, actually? The real challenge comes is the disease problem, actually. The problem is many of these diseases is, in fact, are not looked at in a temporal manner. They, in fact, are looked at as a static diseases. Incidentally, these diseases can be broadly classified into four different forms. There's an onset of a disease, there is a disease that is where, where a disease tries to put together things, and then you reach an equilibrium pace. I can give you an example. For example, diabetes, which is a disease of high sugar, in fact, is, is, is an equilibrium state of your disease. The insulin which is produced in your body is, in fact, never had a chance to go back and metabolize and bring the levels down. So typically, all the, all the diagnosis right now for the chronic diseases happens in an equilibrium phase of the problem. And this equilibrium phase is not the most useful phase, in fact, because it's only telling you the symptoms and not telling you the cause. And the real challenge in disease biology is lies at the bottom of what is the cause of a disease. And that's the point that I'm trying to come to you, to all of you, to talk about it that in fact the challenge is to understand the causes and not the, and not the reasons of why, what the disease is about. It's not about having high blood pressure. It's about why that high blood pressure has come. It's not about having high glucose. It's about understanding how to get to do that and what you can understand. And a rather difficult problem of chronic diseases is in fact the last part, which is a period of uncertainty that I measure. Now, what happens in this is that because of the long periods of survival of these chronic diseases, in fact, your tissue, where the, all these activities are happening, undergoes what is called remodeling. This is an example of a disease that I talked to you about with LIGO in the beginning, done in our lab. It's from a patient sample, where you take a normal, normal skin and take the skin that is different from it. And you can very clearly make out it's from the same human being, but you can see how different they are. One of them is a diseased skin, one of the non-disease skin. Now, what is the problem with the diseased skin? The problem with the diseased skin is there is a structural fault right now. The disease, in f the skin, in fact, is no longer what a normal skin should look like. And therefore, the cells that are supposed to function normally cannot, in fact, function. And the chronic diseases, the last period of chronic disease, in fact, is to do with the fact that this is it becomes a major limitation and a bottleneck to look at. So how do we work around? And in fact, if we understand the trajectory of the diseases that I drew, very many of us, in fact, can solve the, solve the problem on our own. Of course, the drugs are there to help you to manage, but the symptoms are within your own hands and within your own body. And in fact, many doctors now are practicing this method 
of how to look at symptoms. So these are so, so I really think that what, one of the most important things we need to do is to change the practice of medicine that's going on in this country right now or boiled around that country, not only that. We actually look at the process of disease and not just the disease as a one-time point event. You need to actually, in fact, look at ways of how I define your own metabolism. And that's why the family physicians is a very important aspect because it's within your genes and therefore you get to know how you can look at it. You can just treat, not treat the causes, but you need to look at symptoms. Symptoms are the key to your disease maintenance of all chronic diseases. And they, in fact, can be found within your nutrition, within your food, within your environment, within what you do on a daily basis and therefore you can treat them on your own. The genes are the destiny and the triggers are elsewhere. Please remember it's not just about your genes. The triggers have to be tackled and in different way. Incidentally, many triggers can, con can cause the same disease and the disease like vitiligo which continue to change in your life, we can show that many times the new patches that appear is in fact for different causes and therefore you can stall them because they are all part of your lifestyle and they're all part of what you do actually. And eventually, if you cannot resolve these, the problem is how do I recover the tissue back? How do I bring back the life to the tissue that is dead? For example, in the diabetes, I want to improve the pancreas. In the case of disease like vitiligo, I want to improve the skin and that's the way to manage and in fact carry out the process. So the point is, because 20% of the population of India is down with chronic diseases, its onus is on us. You're not going to have medicine doctors only solving the problems. The problem has to be solved within ourselves in a way that defines simplistic solutions, trajectories of path, and able to in fact carry out and give us ways to look at it. I think I'll stop here. Thank you.